No, me? I've been doing fine, you know. Just eating cup ramen and baked beans and uh, moving around from place to place, but I'm doing good. It's fine. You know, it's great. <sighs> The information I have is essential and and I haven't given you everything yet. You know, we need to we need to talk about microcontrollers again today. And uh, this is for your ears only, so so keep it to yourself, okay? Yeah, see you. Hi everyone, this is Liana and welcome back to Cloud Chats with Cats. You might remember that the last time when we talked about microcontrollers, we actually set up our board, our ESP8266, to connect to an MQTT broker and we did a connection test. Well, in today's episode, we're going to move forward and we're going to see how that MQTT broker connects to an IoT cloud service. So as for the IoT cloud service, you've got many options available. You can run it in Container Engine for Kubernetes or you can run it in a compute instance. What I've chosen is to run it on Kubernetes and there are many options available. For example, um, we could use Open Remote, which is completely open source, or we could use ThingsBoard uh, IoT. In my example, I chose ThingsBoard. So let's first take a look at how we can set up IoT in the cloud. And as always, I will be using Oracle Cloud to demonstrate everything. Now, in order to install ThingsBoard IoT, we just need to follow their guide, which is available on the documentation page. I will link to this guide in the description so you can follow it yourself. So first of all, we need to clone the Kubernetes scripts. Then if we're using the professional edition, we need to configure the license key in tbnode.yaml. And afterwards, we just need to run the three scripts that come with the files that we have cloned, which are install tb, deploy third party and deploy resources. And now we can connect to the ThingsBoard UI. And now that we have our ThingsBoard IoT up and running, let's take a look at how we can enable the integration and set up uh, our connection to the MQTT broker so we can receive messages. So here is the ThingsBoard UI where you can manage your rules, your data converters and the integrations. Let's take first a look at what the integration looks like. So you can see here that I've got an integration created for my Mosquito server, which is my MQTT broker running in the cluster. And if we click on it, we can see the, uh, the definitions. When we create a new integration, we need to give it a name, select the type, and we are going to select here MQTT in the list then whether it's enabled or not and whether we want to run it in debug mode and in order to test we'll just run it in debug mode and then of course we need uplink and downlink data converters these are the data converters that we have seen before and we'll choose the ones we have created and then we need to tell it the host the port and the connection timeout so an uplink data converter will basically take the message that comes from the microcontroller and then decode it using a function written in JavaScript. So as you might remember, we are going to use a temperature and humidity sensor to read the data within our home. So in order to do that, we need to set up our message types and also the type of board that we will be using in the ThingsBoard IoT. And now let's test the connection out and see that we are getting messages from MQTT to IoT. Let's use, for example, MQTT Explorer to connect to our broker. And then let's send a test message. In our integration, we have defined topic filters as ESPA266 and Liana testing from ESPA266. So let's check if it has picked up the messages from any of these topics. And here we can see that two events have been triggered from the integration executor type uplink because we have received those messages and the status is okay. And now let's take a look at these and see the kind of messages that we received. And here we can see the topic and the payload. So the messages have been successfully decoded. So ThingsPort has a temperature and humidity sensors template that we can use in order to see the data that we receive. And we can just install this template and we have instructions on how to use it. 
And now that we have installed this solution, we can actually modify it in order to display the data from our own sensors instead of the ones that it provides by default. So we are going to have a look at how to do that in our next episode. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found this useful and I'll catch you in the next episode. In the next episode, we will take a look at how we can integrate the temperature and humidity sensor to our microcontroller board, the ESPA266, and then send the information end-to-end -end from our uh, sensors to the IoT. Thank you very much and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!